the nation's <laughs> favourite celebrities. It's not worth a tenner. Paired up with an expert. You're learning. <laughs> And a classic car. This is very exciting, isn't it? It is. Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Got a nice ring to it. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. Come on. But it's no easy ride. Break? I can't. Who will find a hidden gem? I hope I don't live to regret this. Take the biggest risk. We've definitely got a problem. Will anybody follow expert advice? You'd never catch me by anything like that. There will be worthy winners. <laughs> And valiant losers. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Put your pedal to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Today, we're all over Cheshire with a couple of chums who, regardless of their lack of knick knack know how, can't be accused of taking this competition lightly. I want to make sure that come the end of the week, I win. What, do you actually think you've got a chance? Yeah. Oh, Stan Lively. Do you know what I'm brilliant at? Driving. Blagging. My blagging skills are unreal. We shall soon see. <laughs> but whether blagging or bragging, it promises to be quite a ride with TV personality Christine McGuinness and her good friend, the soap star Colson Smith. Your advantage in the antiques game is that you have more life experience than me. Colson! <laughs> Christine, a former Miss Liverpool, has appeared in several reality shows, as well as making a documentary about her family and autism. Are we ready to go into third gear? It's a big step. We're driving. Colson, <laughs> meanwhile, practically grew up on Coronation Street, playing Craig Tinker, once a typical teen, and now a police officer with OCD. We've got to do the looking, the hunting, the buying. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm going to be really good at. Our pair first acquired the competitive bug <laughs> on a reality sports game show. So let's get ready for the decider, this time with antiques. Do you think you have got more chance of winning the games or more chance of winning this? Oh, surely I've got to be better at shopping than I was at all those sports. Quite. Even though she was rather handy with the javelin, there'll be little opportunity for that in their Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> this is an antique, isn't it? This is not 100 years old. You don't think this is 100 years old? Of course it is. This isn't 100 years old. No, what do you think it is? 1960s, maybe 65. Do you know anything about antiques? I know that this isn't one. He's actually pretty close. 1967, the summer of love. This was it, born before us. It was born before us. It was born a, a long time before me. Hey. Ditto a couple of people who will be very happy to help with the looking, hunting, buying and hopefully profit-making. Experts and fans, Irita Marriott and Hetty Jago. So, Colson and Christine, are you excited to meet them? Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to meet Colson because I love Coronation Street. Well, I have to say, girl power. Bring it on. Yes, an all-girl team. <laughs> yes. Also, in a fiercely competitive frame of mind, bodes well. I feel like the expert is there to help you. And yeah. I feel like I need the help. Not as much as you need the help, but I need the help. Colson! Cheeky. Their Cheshire rummage will take them all the way to Stockport. But they start out in Frodsham. Close to the River Mersey, also the birthplace of mezzo-soprano and Handel interpreter Alice Coote. Overture, almost over. Ah, the first shop. They're about to get shop putting. <laughs> Molto vivace. No real need to hurry, of course, because the Cheshire Antiques and Vintage Emporium has more than enough to go round. The same applies for experts. Hello, Hattie. Hello, lovely you to all right? meet you. Nice yes. to meet you. This is cool, isn't it? Yes, it is. Are you excited? Slightly nervous. For... Slightly nervous. Good nerves. Yes. Good nerves. Excited nerves. Yeah, ready. Yeah. Ready to find something good. Good. Is this your kind of thing, then? Have you been to antique shops before? Not since being a child, probably. But now, looking at it from an adult point of view, it's, just, it's, a, it's a very different thing. Yeah. Oh, definitely for grown-ups. Hey! 
Hi. Okay, we're good. Hi. I'm okay. I'm glad you're only a cell mate. How are you feeling? Okay. I feel like there, there isn't much organisation going on. I'm like there isn't sections. <laughs> she has a point. Antique shops do mix things up rather. Right, come on, let's start over here. Is there anything there that jumps out at you because it might be the right texture, the right colour, the right look that attracts you for some reason? It just looks very cluttered. I just don't know what would be an antique in there. Do you know what that is? Is it a butter dish? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And it was made by Foley China, which was early Shelley pottery. Okay. So this is actually over 100 years old. No way. Yes. No way. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I want to hold it. Go on. Does that make you feel completely different about it? Well, yeah, I would have thought that's over 100 years old. I know, because the colour is so bright. Yeah. It's so fashionable in a way, and usable and practical. And the price, £15. Yeah, it's really cheap. In pottery world, Foley China is good news. OK. It's actually quite a nice and desirable thing. Named after the Foley district in the potteries. But does it matter that it's got a little chip in it? It will make a difference, but you find another one. That's crazy. So now you know that even when you look at a cabinet, and there's so many different things there, you can pick out one and it will have a story, it will have something to tell you. So don't be afraid to pick up anything that for whatever reason catches your eye. Right, come on, let's go and explore. Okay. See where your eye takes you, Okay. yeah? Good plan. We don't want to boggle anyone. Where have the others got to? You know these in here? <laughs> yeah, the figures. Yeah. OK. So I bought a house off my great aunt. Yeah. yeah. And I cleared it out and she had loads of these. Yeah. But I never knew what they were, but my mum took them. Have I just given away, like, a family heirloom to my So, j well, no. OK. <laughs> they're not worth a huge amount of money. They are, without looking at them, they're by Ladro. Spanish, from Valencia. They were obviously a very common thing at the time. Yes, 10, 20 years ago, they were making good money, but the market sort of dropped off for that sort of thing. So I don't need so, to go and raid my mum's house. You don't then. need to be worried, Perfect. no. <laughs> Perfect. Should we keep looking? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. That's proprietor Dave, by the way available for when you find anything, wherever it lurks. The Slazenger Junior College. Now, this is in the day. This is a good, good hockey stick. Jolly even? How much? £12. Back on the bench. What have you spotted? I've seen these two metal plates that say princess on. I'm not really sure what they are at all. They've just caught me out because I've got two little princesses at home. Right, so the princess, that is actually a classic car piece. I mean, we are travelling the country in classic car. We are? Um, that comes from an Austin princess. So it would have been a plate, like, for them, for anybody to so recognise. like the badge. On like the, the badge of the car. Of the, car. Okay. Yeah. the princess was originally launched in 1947. So I really like those. I can't say I've seen many of those around. They're 15 pounds each. Yeah. Surely that's worth a punt. We don't have to buy two if you don't want to. We could just buy one. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Let me see. You see these screw bits? That's where it would have fastened to the actual car. See, that one's in better condition than this. Yeah, it is. I've got a son as well and the cassette player behind it, the little blue robot. That is just cool, isn't it? It is cool. Yeah, in the 1980s. Do you remember the cassette? I do, of course, do I remember winding the thing in the back <laughs> every time they come out. What was the first one you bought? Do you oh, remember really? one of my mum's? I think it was Bob Marley or something. It's a tough one because it's not quite the collector's thing yet. No. And the brand isn't quite good enough for that. I think let's leave that one. I'm really happy okay. with this. Is that a definite then? Yeah. Yeah. One nil. Oh, hello. He is. Not much the wiser though. <laughs> Please don't tell anybody what I'm buying, will ya? Quite. Find your own stuff. This is quite cool. It's very, yeah. Do you like that? It catches your eye. It's the sort of thing that I could imagine seeing at Kevin Webster's garage. Yes. It's kind of film set, sort of. Yeah, like proppy. Yes. Yeah, it does look yeah. like that. Yeah, but also I think it's kind of like an interior decorator's piece. I think it's quite interesting. Especially with the colours and the bold writing. And yeah. it's something that you don't see much of. Yeah. And anything to do with sort of vintage motoring. 
yeah. um, items do really, really quite well at auction. We quite regularly get sort of um, oil cans, just small ones, yeah. um, anything that's got a bit of rust on it, people just love. And let's just double check that it's definitely original and it's not fake rust. Yes. I would say that's definitely original rust. I would you? say it is. <laughs> it also real. looks like it should be very heavy, but seeing as you've just picked it up with two fingers, yeah. it's really not. So no contents in it, no. which is a shame because sometimes oil cans do better when they've actually got the contents. People will buy it for what's in it as well. Yes, yeah. okay. But look, we've got cobwebs and everything. We have. Ticket price, £28. So would you have this at your house then, do you reckon? I'll possibly have it in my garden, but maybe chop the top off and use it as a planter. But would you? destroy it? Um, I mean, you do whatever you like to it. You can make a steel drum and join a band. <laughs> I think at £28, we've got a chance. I agree. Money on that. I agree. Put it on the so list. We will put that on the list. Fab, should we carry on? Yep. That's even things up. One item each. Nothing too pricey thus far, though. I'm having such a good time with Colson. I think we have similar taste in things. He likes sort of like advertising and like props, anything to do with films, so that's really cool. It's so interesting finding out about Coronation Street. I have a really good feeling about this. I think we're gonna win, we're gonna smash it. Aha, this is what I've always wanted, you see. I thought it was a gavel at first, thought I, because obviously I use a gavel for when, you, when I'm auctioneering. So show us your, yeah. what would you do? Oh, see, I have a little palm one, so it just fits in the palm of my hand and give it a, give it a little, but this is a serious bit of kit. I could use this as a gavel. So if you were to do it, yeah. sell him once, sell him twice. Yeah. All done and finished then at 20 pounds. A profit, I hope. Christine, meanwhile, is definitely getting her eye in. That's my taste. It looks quite modern, but I think it's probably very old. The thing is, they actually copied the 17th century leather jugs. Really? So, you saying that looks actually quite modern. Yeah. It's copying something that is like 300 years old. It has that really timeless kind of look. Royal Dalton Lambeth were so-called because they started out south of the Thames before expanding to the Potteries. And this silver-mounted leather jug dates from 1898. £75, how does that make you feel? I really, really like the jug. I don't like the price. 75 is <laughs> a lot. I know, but buying quality always pays off. That's the theory. Brace yourselves. Dave. Hi. Hello. Hello. I found this beautiful jug. I absolutely love it. The price is a lot more than what I wanted to pay, but I've also got another item that I left behind the till, a right. princess car badge. No haggle. £15. So I'm thinking if I take the two of them, maybe you could do me a little deal. OK, well, that's 75 The very best I could do on that would be 65 OK, I'm yeah. happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Nicely done. Eighty pounds it is. Two items bagged. Thank you Have so a much. Lovely day. And you. With three hundred and twenty left. How do you feel about that? Really happy. No boot. They call it the frunk, apparently. <laughs> Next shop. Here we come. <sighs> While we head back inside, where Colson's already snared this drum. Ah, Hetty. Now this, this excites me, actually, because as an actor, yeah. I, I have an interest in film, yeah. believe it or not. Um, I've got a film podcast with two of my other mates in Corrie, oh, Jack okay. and Ben, and we educate each other on film. So back in the day, bef before, before, be before me and you, <laughs> to make a film, they used to, like, film it onto film, and then to watch it back, you'd have to watch it on a strip projector, which I think this is what this is. Should we have a look at it? I think battered boxes look yes. better. Yes, we like the packaging. Yeah. Oh, no way, it's gold as well. I think that looks cool. Do you want to take it out? Yeah. Wow, look at that. Oh, look, you've got all the film strips in it as well. 35mm film strip projectors were a toy movie alternative to the ones used in cinemas. I think it's cool. Is it the sort of thing that someone would have as an ornament, or is it because I, I don't know what the use would be? I think it's people just collect this sort of thing. Yeah, now you can see through... Can you see through it? Yeah, what is it? It's like a teddy bear picnic <laughs> film. Oh, look, there are loads of them. Oh, wow, look at the packaging as well. I really like this. I mean, from my experience, projectors don't do hugely well at oh. auction. I know, sorry. But this one, I like it, and you've got a connection to it. You love it's it. It's a feel. It's a feel. Yeah. We might be able to get it for a bargain. Yeah. It's nice that it's got the actual, you know, what do you call them? Films. Films. <laughs> <laughs> Ticket price, £35. Reduced.
Worth a gamble. Yeah, great. OK, we're going to get that. How good are your haggling skills, though? That's the question. I'm not sure, but I'll find out. As will Dave. Hello, Dave. Hi, Hattie. Found a couple of things, haven't we? Yeah. So, we have the projector, which is £35 on the ticket price. Yeah. And £28. Yes. I think you've done well there. Well, I would like to take the both of them. Yeah. What's the best price you can do me for? Uh, well, I can knock a bit off for you. Um, do the two for 55. You happy with that? Yeah, go yeah. on then, Dave. 30 for the projector and 25 for the drum. On we go. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Three, four, five in hand. You happy? Yeah, very. Successful shot one. I think so. Meanwhile, out on the Cheshire byways, there's a beetle on the move. Hey! Are they impressive? Simple pleasures, eh? <laughs> they suit the car, don't they? Yeah. But, aside from the wipers, what about the purpose of their trip? You think you're going to be really good at haggling? I hope so, yeah. I think we've got one of them faces that you can't really say no to. <laughs> <laughs> you already know where you stand. <laughs> Is there anything in particular that you look for that you go, yeah, I'm definitely going to make good money on that? You don't know it until you see it. So let's say if we find a piece of porcelain, how is that going to make you feel? There's a lot of porcelain about, isn't there? Yeah. So it's not like it's rare. Or it could be. It would have to be really different or it would have to have one of those stamps at the bottom that you would recognise and I wouldn't. <laughs> you got it! <laughs> not off. Time to try her hand at another shopping experience close to the village of Sandyway at Faro House Antiques. Just there. You can't miss it. Oh, this looks big. It is, rather. Lots of stuff and lots of dealers represented here. Lots of ground to cover. Good job they've got some wheels. Oh, God, I'm not that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't break this, because I haven't got enough money left to buy it. How is our insurance? Good question. We're off. Find the bargains. <laughs> and £320 left to buy them with. Oh, Christine, look at this. What do you think of that? I think what is it? It looks a bit like a casket. <laughs> it is kind of a casket, but it's for tea. A tea caddy. It is amazing. If that's been all handcrafted, the detail in that is incredible, isn't it? I think this should be a maybe, depending on the price. That's at 120, but it is an antique. It's lovely and there's nothing else like it. It's just the bottom has been replaced. But if I was 130 years old, would I look like how I look now? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So just like it this has... tea box, we might need to get a bit of work done now and again to keep ourselves looking as beautiful <laughs> as this box. <laughs> no replacement bottoms, though, please. Or glue. So, would we say if we can get this for the right price, it's a yes? Okay. Yeah, definitely. Let's pop this back. Keep it as One almost possible purchase. Let's keep on looking. I want something shiny. But with her are Corrie Star and Auctioneer combination, somewhere on the other side of nearby Northwich by now, in the fabulously named village of Lostock Graylam. Here we are. OK, you ready for the second shot? I'm ready. Lock, Good. stock. And barrel. Please yourselves. Gosh, there's so much stuff in here, isn't there? We've got a lot of brass. We have got a lot of brass. Doesn't do well at auction, brass. And speaking of brass, they do also have plenty to spend. £345. <laughs> Whoops! What about the pigs right in front of you there? The pigs? Yeah. So they are NatWest piggy banks. Oh, which we're not allowed to so... mention. <laughs> Just as long as we point out how the ones are available. So each character was a certain level of savings. So ah. I think the baby one was the first one that you would get. But I think the one to have, I believe, is the one in the white jacket, and he's like the, the banker pig. But the big question is, are they going to make me any money at auction? They make sort of 40 to £60. Pounds. OK. Do they appeal to you? 
they're just different and interesting. It's different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different. Would you have them on your mantelpiece? <laughs> Maybe not under the telly sort of thing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're cool. the telly. And yeah. coin banks are always useful. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Piggy. <laughs> and when they do decide to part with some pennies, Propartied Jan will surely be on hand. Colson. Yes. What is your opinion on this? Pretty colours. Yeah? Where would you think in the world that this was made? Not British. It is British, but it's made to look a different style. So this is by a company called Royal Crown Derby, and the pattern is called the Old Imari pattern. And that is because the port of Imari in Japan was exporting all of this sort of style of Japanese porcelain. So it's in the Imari style, the Imari palette. It's this gold and red and deep blue. No ticket price on that one. This is a nice thing. It's, it's good quality. You get the impression you're quite excited by this. Yes, because I see this pattern so often at auction and it always does well. And I think we found a little gem here. So Do you like it? I like the colours. I think the gold is quite striking and then obviously the orange has a bit of a ginger flair to it, so that's why it's standing out. <laughs> Suits you. Yes. <laughs> Ready for a deal? Hello, Jan. We might have found something that we like. Really? Right, the big question is, how much is it? I'll let you have it for £20, but don't tell anyone. You are my favourite person now. Yeah. That is a deal. Well, almost. Thank you very much. Autograph. Yeah. Whose autograph? Which one? Yours. Okay, we oh could. <laughs> that showbiz. Three, two, five left. Right, I'll give you the goods. Yes, thank you. I will try not to drop it. Yes, please. Onwards and upwards. Yes. But let us hasten back to Sandyway, where the search goes on. Well, sort of. Although they have this Indian sandalwood tea caddy on standby, Andrew is the man to consult here. Right, Christine. Yeah. And now you said you want something shiny. Yeah. And I don't know whether that. Wow. That what do you think? Absolutely beautiful. Do you really like it? Yeah. It's so gorgeous. It's like the rainbow. It's iridescent. It's shiny. It's pearlescent. Known as opaline glass, meaning milky and shiny. That is absolutely to die for. I love the shape, I love the colour. Look at the bottom. Oh, they've kept it rough the, where they've broke the... Yeah, the puntal mark. So it's clear that it was handmade. It has the right age to it. Let's have a look at the base. Beautiful. Oh, can you see that edge? How it's just ever so slightly rough. And that's that years... Just wear and tear. Yeah, years of being slid across the table. How that has survived... Why do you think this is quite old? 1905, 1900. Really? Yes. Wow. Hands down, because that design with the flowers, it's so natural. It's what Art Nouveau in 1905 was all about. Oh. Well, it is quite a lot. 335. Yeah, got expensive taste. Maybe he's bought it well. You never know. Yeah, if you like it. I really, really like it. If you don't ask, you don't get. Right, get those eyelashes going. Okay. Because you're going to need them. <laughs> Come on, girl. We okay. can do this. Let's go. This should be fun. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Have a good day. Uh, yes, fine, thank you. Oh, yeah. lovely. Do you know what? I've had a really stressful day today. Oh, yeah. I have. Uh, I'm in a competition with my friend Colson. He's trying to make more money than me at auction. Mm -hmm. But I've seen this beautiful piece. I absolutely love it's it. It's gorgeous. Well, it is £335. What is the absolute death that you can let this go for? The lowest price, the best price. No more haggling. Yeah. No more haggling. Come on, Andrew. So it gives you a chance. £120. Really? That's, it. That's incredible. Thank it you so you will much. Like it. Sure. Well, do you know what? For that, maybe we should consider the box. The box. Yeah, it I had think. 120 on yeah. it, but it had. A Quite lot damaged. Yeah. Lot. Yeah. So the best price on that is sixty pounds, which hopefully gives you an, oh, a wow. bit more of a chance. That's amazing. I think it's a no-brainer. Bingo! You've Thank been amazing. You Crikey! Thanks, Andrew. I'm going to run and get the box. Yeah. <laughs> You're amazing, honestly. <laughs> Incredible. Colson <Right>. thinks he's won. <laughs> <laughs> he's got another thing coming. Got to be better than athletics. 
Will you drive with on your knee? Only if you drive well. Okay. What do you mean only if I drive well? <laughs> Cheek. 140 left over. Come on, Bertie. Let's get going. Yes, do come on, Bertie. Oh, here we go. Because it's now getting late and our antique seekers will be in need of a little light refreshment. Fancy us finding a farm that sells ice cream in the middle of nowhere. Must be their lucky day. Hello there. What Hi. We, how do you make a rainy day feel summery? With an ice cream. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You've got a balance, you know, it does not Lovely. I just love how chilled we are. Excuse the pun. Heels <laughs> <laughs> in at all? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Cheers. To the winning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Night, night. <laughs> Next day, there's been a change in the weather, not to mention a change behind the wheel. Now, do you know how to do you in the wine club? You have to stick your hand out and do it for me. <laughs> and that's what this is for. But who exactly is in the driving seat when it comes to the competition? So, when you bought the items, yeah. did you ask, like, what the best price was? I haggled on everything and I feel like I've done really, really well. I should be worried because you're confident, aren't you, at your ability here? Definitely. Yesterday, Christine really set the pace, acquiring four lots for a combined cost of £260. So, just like yes. this tea box, we might need to get a bit of waste on now and again. While Colson parted with quite a bit less for his three items, just 75. I think battered boxes look yes. better. Although they do still have a long, long way to go. Do you feel like you're going to do better selling your antiques than what you were on the games? I'll do better at selling antiques than I will do at the hurdles. I mean, you can't really get much worse. I can know. You? Ouch! Time now to have a frank discussion about what's in the front. Get it open, then. Ta-da! This, my friend, is the Strip Master Film Strip Projector 35mm. Back in the olden days, it's what they used to watch film recorded on. So it's a projector that you can watch fresh film on. OK. It's what you call an antique. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, I like it. Well, it's nice that it got the original box. Yeah, we like yeah. the box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of my vase? Very small. Yeah, you, you be careful with that, because you're holding money there. Really? Yeah, but look at the stamp. Old Amari? Yep, what else does it say? Royal Crown Derby. Royal yeah. Crown Derby. English Bone China. Which, to me and Hetty, means make money at auction. It does, doesn't it? And we only paid £20. Look at that. that She's is worried. Cheap. She's it... worried, Christine. <laughs> you should be worried. No, I'm Thank not, you very I'm much. not worried yet. I'm now, not you put it down yet. carefully in one piece, please. <laughs> because you've got a very small vase, which is beautiful, but have you seen what I've got? This? No, that is big money. Very big money. How much have you paid for this? Well, it was 335 and I got it for 120 Oh, no. <laughs> do we need to up our game today? So we do. We need to find a big this, spend is this today. serious money? That is. It could be. Right, well... <laughs> on that note. Yeah, You just yeah, place well. that back nice and carefully. Thank you, Colson. If only Alice... Oh, <gasps> don't! <laughs> I genuinely thought you were going to drop that. I think we all did. What's in the box? This is a handcrafted wooden antique tea caddy. It's gorgeous, and I got it at half the price. They were selling it at 120, and I got it for 60 pounds. What's going on with all this negotiating, this know. haggling? You need to up your game. She was born to do this. Can I just say, she's incredible at haggling. Well, I Amazing. I understand mean, why you're getting discounts and I'm not. I've got one of them faces the... that they can't say no to constantly. <laughs> so we've got one more shop left today and we've got over 300 pounds. We have, yeah. So all we need to do is just buy a vase or a tea box yeah. and we're in. I mean, do you know what? Imitation, it's a form of flattery, isn't it? it? Is. They need to copy. Then. We'll take it. Good luck. Well, get this boot shut and we'll get back on the road, shall we? <laughs> Let's go. More shopping later, but first, a trip to the nearby metropolis, famous, amongst other things, for the world's longest-running TV soap opera. Have you seen the view? Oh, wow. Do you yeah. know I've never been to Manchester before. Have you not? No. 
So you were quite young when you were on Corrie then, when you first started? Yeah, I was 11 when I first went in, and I only went there for two episodes. Oh, really? Two episodes, I was non-speaking. It was all I was meant to stay for, and 12 years later, I'm still there. Wow, so you went to an audition for it? Yeah, I, right. and I remember my sister had the day off school to come to this audition. Oh. So we both kind of got picked up from school at lunchtime, and we're headed to Manchester for the audition. And um, my mum was like, you can't go to the audition like that. And I'd spilled baked beans down my school <laughs> shirt. So Aww. I did my audition for Coronation Street in my school uniform with a baked bean stain <laughs> all down my shirt. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> also from around here, and from a time long before baked beans, was a certain Georgian culinary entrepreneur. She was the Delia of her day, and our lot are off to one of her old Greater Manchester stomping grounds, beside the River Mersey at Stockport, at one of the few buildings associated with her that's still standing. Christine, we're at a pub. They've come to find out about Elizabeth Raffold. Hi. Hello. Hello there, Sue. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank what you. a beautiful outfit. Oh, thank you. Too. I'm dressed as Elizabeth Raphael as a housekeeper. She was born in 1733. She went into domestic service at the age of 15, and then at the age of 27, she got married, came to Manchester, and settled businesses in catering and a lot more besides. Local writer Suze Appleton has long championed this incredible, but nowadays relatively obscure figure who, during her time, was nationally famous as the author of a popular cookbook. It sold 800 copies in its first edition. It was a really good book because she aimed it for everybody. In fact, she says in the introduction, it's for those of the weakest capacity. Maybe I should buy this book. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things she originated was the rich fruit cake for a wedding cake. That recipe came from Elizabeth. She was selling bride cakes in the middle of the 18th century. Before that, it was a bread-based concoction with mm. fruiting, and it got broken over the bride's head at the wedding. Oh. Which meant that every bride was spending the wedding covered in cake crumbs. <laughs> Piccadilly is her recipe. Crumpets are her recipe. Love a good crumpet. <laughs> Who doesn't? One other classic, which also features in Elizabeth's cookbook, but not by its much more familiar name, a sweet patties. My claim is that Elizabeth Raffles' recipe was the origin of the Eccles cake. It's a recipe she gave to a female servant who was leaving her to go and live at Eccles. And there's an article in the mid-19th century that says that her servant and the woman's niece made a fortune out of the recipe. Eccles cakes have been around for centuries. They were actually banned in the 17th century by the Puritans. But Elizabeth came up with the recipe that used flaky pastry. And besides the cookbook, she had a catering business, mm -hmm. then she had a shop, then she opened a register office, which enabled servants to find work, because prior to Elizabeth's time, the only place she found servants was at a country fair. And then she opened a pub, a big coaching inn. It was a huge venture in Manchester. And an article about her, written in 1850, uh, just after she died, said that she was the one that sorted out Manchester's cookery. Why is she not recognised in history books? I have no idea. But for me, she was the first woman of significance in Manchester who made a difference. And now the others are about to make Eccles cakes with chef Guan Fu Tanzi. In front of you, you've got some butter and yes. flour. So if you want to chuck that in your bowl. I love pastry, so the buttery, the better. So next, we've got your flour and your salt. Yeah, and I'm going to take your technique of the... Shaking it in. Shaking it in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get your hands messy. And what we're going to do is we're going to coat all that flour into your butter and it's going to turn into a crumb-like texture. How firm with the hands? As firm as you okay. can. Quite therapeutic as well. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a little bit of water in. OK. So what the water would do is bind everything together seems to be going OK so far. Am I top of the class, would you say? I think well, everyone's doing a great job. OK. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The next stage is to fold the pastry to create the puff layers. It looks a bit like my head. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, everyone ready to do the fold, yeah? Oh, yes. Hard to imagine Eccles cakes with short crust pastry, isn't it? 
Then, after a brief spell in the fridge, it's time to add the all-important fillings. So in front of you, you've got some cutters, so raisins or sultanas, got candied orange peel, nutmeg and some allspice. So you want to flour the top a little bit. Now we're going to roll out the pastry. So what you want to do is you want to roll it out as thin as you can, very evenly, about three millimetres thick. And then cut out the cake shapes. Eccles cake is a big item on the menu at Roy's Rolls, where, oh, yeah, where right. I work, it's often a cup of tea and an Eccles cake. <laughs> big Manchester dish. So you need roughly about a small tablespoon in the middle. Just don't be tempted to overdo the fruit. Oh, no, I put on too many. Oh, hello. Ooh, <laughs> maybe hello. This, maybe. Someone likes their currants. So then you want to take one and then put it on top and then you want to pinch the sides down with your fingers. Elizabeth Raffold would definitely recognise those. And that's it. Apart from popping them in the oven at 2.20 for 20 minutes. Oh, and sharing them round, of course. Lovely. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh. We bring baked goods. They smell amazing. They do, they smell really good. Come on. Oh, no, oh it's, it's literally... Oh, oh it's, that's a oh, baking pastry. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> so, what do we think? It's delicious. Well, congratulations. Oh, boy. In the words of Mary Berry, I'm getting a soggy bottom sat here, so I think we should move. <laughs> Let's get off. Should we go? Guys? Thank you. <laughs> now that they've had their Eccles cake and eaten it, it's time to carry on shopping. Elsewhere in the fair town of Stockport, at a Grade 2 listed former cotton mill. And here's the beetle. We have made it. We have. Safely in one piece. They've travelled just over a mile, by the way. It's a big shop. Oh, yes, almost 1,500 square metres. So, there's really an awful lot of pear mill to go round. <laughs> and they still have 325 to spend, remember? I'll tell you what I do actually like, me personally. I like old-school photo frames. That's so ornate, isn't it? Yeah, it's just cool. This is real, authentic, yes. 19th century. Look at the back of it. I know. £49, though. Expensive. Yeah. Very expensive. <laughs> no sale, then? Oh, Etty. Look what they've got. No way. Golden firm, superior lubricants. <laughs> Should we go and have a look at it's these? The It'd be interesting to see it how almost, much they are. Yeah, but it almost looks older than our one. Yeah. This could be interesting. So, do you want to see the price? I do, but I sort of don't. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. I'm hoping that this isn't less than £28. Yes. Ours ready. is in nicer condition. Go on. £68. £68. Pounds. £68. Pounds. And we pay We're pounds. quitting. <laughs> What's going on? A welcome shot in the arm. Oh, we're in the money. I'm really proud of us. Well, if this is worth £68, I'll very carefully put it yeah. back on. We have Hit, hit it. the jackpot. Put it there. Put it there. Come I'm looking on. forward to auction now. Here we go. <laughs> oh, good. Ah, here comes the opposition. With a bit less cash to spend. 140. You want a cup of tea? <laughs> Always. <gasps> It's a baby coat. That's designer. They're also very confident, it seems. I don't think it's an antique. But... <laughs> I'm really impressed by her. She's doing amazing. In the first shop, you could tell she was overwhelmed. And then she went in the second shop. It felt like she could finally see everything around her. And she bought the best things ever. And this is a little bit like the second shop, so let's hope she can find another bargain. Fingers crossed. I think this is another boy thing that I quite like. It's got a wheel. It's, it's got, got a turn. wheel, it's got levers, it's got yeah. moving parts. And I think it's still working. Or you could still imagine this to be working. Oh, yeah, it's from a cobbler's shop. Yeah. I feel like it's the sort of thing that you could imagine seeing at, like, an old-school town centre. You adjust the size of the shoe to fit the shoe on it, and then yeah. you do your repairs or... Yeah. ..you know, heel replacement or whatever you want to do, and... It looks like... It's got drawers with more tools and accessories in to make bigger shoes, I guess. It seems to have everything that you could possibly need. Yeah. I love this sort of thing as well. 
if I had a workshop, I would want it in there. I'm not saying I could use it. Yeah. So we've got £179. Okay. But you do get two of them, yeah. and the tools, and the box. Yes. I think we need to get quite a bit off that price. How much? I don't know if we can get it for around £100, I would say we might have a shot. So it's down to your haggling skills, really. That is some haggling. Mm, and we know that Christine is very, very good yeah. at haggling. Oh, we certainly do. Spotting, too. The things like right in front of me there, it's, it's not pretty, it's not sparkly, it's just, I just don't know what it is. But for some reason you want to know more. That is so bizarre you picked that up. That is probably one of the oldest things in a whole entire shop. Read it on the other side. Oh, it's a Roman vase, first, second century AD. Oh, so that's so not a design, that's not painted no. on. And it's been dug up. But for a piece of glass to be dug up and not being broken, yeah, it's a bit crazy, isn't it? Certainly beats a rusty oil tin, I'd say. <laughs> 120 pounds. So that will have been a clear glass. You can actually probably pick it off if you tried. You could, you could clean it, but I mean, it's part of what it it's is. It's part of, yeah, that's why I was drawn to it. It has that sparkle in there. Like you can see the yes. rainbow. It absolutely blows my mind when I think it's that old. It's so simplistic. Do you like that it has good symmetry? I like the symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> if we can get the price down, I'm happy to take this. What do you think? So you're the expert. And it's one of those things you need a specialist. And in an auction, it could make anything from £20 to £300. Oh, it, it's one of those very... Really, go either one. It's unknown. This is our wild card, and I don't mind that. I think we've got some really good, safe options. OK. We're like a bit of a wild card now and again. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm up for that. that. I'm yeah. up for that, yeah. So, her last buy will be a proper, proper antique. Come on, then. OK. With one more negotiation needed. Hi, Jay. Hello. Honestly, I've loved it here today. It's been amazing. There's so much to look at, but there's just one piece that really stands out. It's a Roman vase. Oh. Okay. But the price is a lot more than what I want to spend. OK. Ideally, I would love to take it away today for £60. It was priced at 120 I do know that trader. I would can probably meet somewhere a little bit closer to the middle. How would you feel about... Eighty pounds. Okay, well, I think if I'm saying sixty and you're saying eighty, how about we really meet in the middle at seventy? Come on, okay. Jess. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope one. it brings you luck. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Quite a deal, eh? Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With seventy pounds left over. Now, what about Colson? Uh, these are all people's names. This is like someone's box in there like family name, like a travelling case, no? Well, they're deed boxes, so I would assume they hold, like, documents. Okay. They're like document boxes. I like them. If only there was one that said C. Smith. Yeah, I know. But they don't. Or Coulson, but I think that might be very unusual. Yeah, your name is so unusual. It Where is. does it come from? It's made up. It's it, made up? It's not made up. It means son of Nicholas, and my dad is called Nicholas. Oh, I love that. That's so mm. nice. I was actually called Benjamin for a day. And then for my a day? Mum, <laughs> my mum told me that... When they brought me back home from the hospital, a baby name book fell off the shelf. Yeah. And it landed on Colson. Quite a tale, eh? This cobbling equipment has already been reserved by the pair, of course. Anything else? Now, this I do like. OK. I thought it was for a tombola. It does look a little bit like yeah, a tombola. That's, but it's not. It's a knife cleaner. Shall we have a quick look at it? Yes. See whether it works? Yes. Okay. It's going to be very heavy. <laughs> so I'll try and grab it, yeah? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy. Oh, it is heavy. It is. This is quite cool. Can you see where the knife would go? Yeah. So what's it doing? Stick your finger in. <laughs> Please don't! Unless you want to lose it. I can honestly say I've never seen one before. Have you not? I've seen a lot of things come through auction and that is not one of them. Is that a good sign? Well, I don't know. I have no idea what it's worth, but it could be a really interesting gamble. I do like it, but do you want the bad news? What's the bad news? You know how some of the other things that I've liked have somehow magically been reduced in price? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is this. OK. So this is on sale, so it's £70. And what was it before? £125. OK. So that we... means nobody's bought it. 
Yeah, but, but we've got a big budget. We have got a big budget and it's cool, it's different. Surely it's the sort of thing someone could have as a statement piece. We'll see whether we can get a bit more off that £70 as well. Yeah. It's <laughs> so heavy, they don't want it in this shop. Let's have it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> oh, easy. Light work. Haggle time. Ah, Tom. You're right. I am all right. I'm going to be better after I've spoken to you. OK. We've found something that we both quite like. OK. Have you tried it? It seems to work. It, it, yeah? Yeah. Normally out of a country house. Yep. It's a cool piece. It is. They're different. There's one slight problem. The price? The price. What a surprise. We have got a figure in mind. Go on. £50? Pounds. I can do 55 and I'm going to say yes to 55. Yes, Deal? Deal. Thank you very Thank much. You. There is one other item I really like. Okay. It's the shoe workstation. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. cool. So we need to know if you can work with us on that. I'll try and do a good deal on it. Yeah? Yeah. What is your best? I will do it for 110. 110. Could you possibly do 95? Always oh, squeezing it. I know. I do. A hundred. Let's go for it. Great. Deal. One hundred and seventy left over. And the buying's all done. With all that competitiveness suddenly replaced by bonhomie. Do you know what I love on a road trip? Oh. A sing song. Oh, do you want to sing? Don't know where we're going, got no way of knowing. Checking out the antticks. I don't know the next Checking verse. Checking out something for a living. Driving on the road to nowhere. Shut eye first. Wakey, wakey, Wakefield. The West Yorkshire Cathedral City that's part of the Rhubarb Triangle and also very close to where Colson grew up. Plus, home to Elite Auctions. Selling in the room, on the net and on the phone. With Simon Bailey, the man on the rostrum. Made and bid up to £60. After scouring Cheshire in search of saleable items, they've now crossed the Pennines and abandoned the Beetle for a sportier number. Oh, this is nice. Beautiful, isn't it? New car today because I made a call last night and I thought, if the sun's out, we need a convertible. Exactly. Oh, there they are. So, what's the mood amongst our MGB driving celebrity anti-curs? How nervous. are you? Nervous. <laughs> I am nervous. I feel OK. Yeah. She's cool as a cucumber, isn't she? Very confident. Yeah. Mm. yeah I think we've done okay. all right, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm excited. But I'm nervous. Yeah, oh, you'll be too. fine. <laughs> Come on, get in there. Let's go. Good luck. Good luck. Colson parted with £230 for his five auction lots. Your thoughts, please, Simon? We've got a Royal Crown Derby, old Imari pattern, in really good, clean condition, really collectible pottery. Should do well in today's auction. Christine splashed exactly 100 more. £330 also on five items. This is my favourite lot of the auction. It's a, uh, a Roman drinking vessel. And for me, this is what the auction world is all about. We're talking about a, a glass artefact that's survived 2,000 years. And today, it's up in here, in the auction room. Exciting stuff. Ah, here they come. Team Lilac leading the way. Starting off with Colson's rotary knife device. It's a proper decor piece. If I had the house for it, I would have one. I think it's cool. What are you doing, sharpening your knife? Are you sharpening as well? Yeah. I hope we put that in the description. No, I didn't put that Oh, no. Well, it's all gone wrong. Well, she'll be on this one, £70, start me. 70 surely, 70 pounds, 60, 60 pounds oh, surely, 50 then, 50 pound is bid on the internet at 50, oh, 50 pounds. Thank you, internet. 50 pound bid, 50 pound bid. You're all tight in here, aren't you? It's good job I got the internet. <laughs> Gentleman's bid at the back, 55. 55, room bid first. Here we go. 55 internet bid. Are we finished? 55 pound then, all done at 55. Uh, so, we're all right with that, aren't we? Broke even. Yeah. Broke even. Yeah. I think we broke even. They certainly did, which is no mean feat. Christine's turn. Her opaline glass Art Deco bowl. Was this our most expensive item? Yeah. It's your secret weapon, this, according to Hetty. She likes well, it. Well, I do like it, but I don't think it's going to make more than 120. Sorry. I actually want this to go to a beautiful home. 
I genuinely care about this piece. It's, it's gorgeous. You know you're not allowed to bid on your own stuff, don't you, as well? I'm not going to bid on it. We've had lots of interest this morning where she'll be. £80 on this one, 80 bid on the net. What? <laughs> Five. 85 in the room, 90. Five. 100. Come on. 110. 120. 130. 140. It's actually got a 50. scratch on it as well. No, it hasn't. 170. 180. What's 190, going on? I knew it. As soon as I seen it, I knew Gentleman's it. Gentleman's bid at 190. Last chance internet. All done. Gentleman's bid at 190. <laughs> a very fine reward. Well done, Christine and Irita. That's a good start. Well, we're only here to take part, and it's a good job that we've not been competitive. Cobblers. I mean, Colson's two shoe repairing machines, of course. I'm now very worried. <laughs> you picked it. I know, and I really like it. I just don't know if it will sell. I wouldn't buy it. No, I wouldn't buy it. Eighty pounds, surely eighty pound. A good article. Surely eighty pounds. Surely eighty pounds. Seventy pounds, seventy bid. Seventy bid. Seventy bid. Come on. Seventy pound. Is it in the bid? That is sixty-nine pounds more than I thought it would sell for. I'm sorry. Not bad. Like Arita said, we could have been a lot worse. Good job that I was never out to win anyway. I was just here no, to take part. No, we just hit part. the experience, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah, you've been going on about you winning since the second we got together. To I told you I want to expand my knowledge on antiques, and that is what I'm here to do. Just as well. Christine's sandalwood tea box is next. This is the one that I'm least confident about. You wooden box. The only worry is that it had bits of mending to it. It's not, it's not in perfect condition. Start me at forty pounds, surely. Forty pounds. Forty no. pounds. Thirty pound bid. Thirty-four. Thirty-six. Thirty-eight. Now. Try forty. Oh, now it's forty. At forty. At forty pound bid. Forty is the bid at forty. So Any cheap. Further Come on, guys. At 40 pound. It's just a wooden box. All done then. For the wooden box. Look at the detail in that. That was half 150 pound. years ago. Christine's first little setback. I'm not worried yet. Q Colson's film strip projector. One of his favourites. I think this would do well. I would like this to make 60. <laughs> I mean, well, you can't lose much, can you? Because you didn't pay much. Thanks for that team talk. <laughs> Lot 101. Ooh, lovely. Rather appealing. Stick master 35. Lovely that. Strip projector 40 pound at 40. Sure. That's a bargain. 40 oh. pound. 40 pound at 40. Oh, Try beautiful. me 30 pounds at 30 pound then, surely. Oh. Surely. Oh, 30 pounds, 20 pound then. Did you go for 20 pounds? Did you go for 20? Anybody else coming in? It's got to be worth more than that. Come 20 on. Pound. Oh. 20 pounds. Oh. Anybody else? No. Are you sure? Oh, Wakefield's oh. letting me down. Pounds. <laughs> 20 pounds. All done at 20. Local lad makes a loss. Colson, I'm sorry. Oh, don't cry. It's OK. Now for Christine's bit of automobilia. It's not a big risk. I don't know how it's going to go. But you loved it. £30, £30, £30, £20. But you can't get them anymore. £20, £20, surely. £10. No! £10 bid. Oh. Oh. bid at £10. £10 Anybody? is a bid. Yes. £10, £10, £10. Anybody else? Are we all finished? It's worth more than she'll take ten pounds. Pounds. She says she'll take a ten. <laughs> at ten pounds. Oh, it's not a big one. Ten pounds. We're all finished at ten. Well, at least it's not a whopper. Do you feel my pain now? Do you feel how it? Do you know how it feels? No, I still feel, think I'm winning. Colson's next chance for that elusive profit is his slightly rusty tin. If I make sixty on this, I'll be very happy. In fact, ecstatic. Is in, I'll get up and I'll do the splits. He might need that lubricant to do it's, the splits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Ooh. Nice try. One, two, one. It's a vintage 5.5 .5 gallon golden film oil can drum. 50 pounds, don't oh, me? Oh, my goodness. Four, I've seen pounds. that somewhere else for 65. 40 pounds at 40 pounds at 40. 30 pounds, then. 30 pounds, surely. 30 pounds. 30 Is everyone pounds. against me in here? 20 pounds. <laughs> 20 pounds, 20 pounds. 22 oh, bid. 22 oh, is the bid at 22. Oh, yeah. Take 24. Anybody else? We're all done at 20, 24, ladies. Bid at 24. Your bid, madam, at 24 pounds. So I've lost a pound there. He's sort of got away with it then. Someone did, whoever it was. <laughs> Thank you, ever felt sorry. Christine's Royal Dalton Lambeth silver mounted leather jug. Next. 
I think it's quite cool. I think, yeah, I think you'll be all right on this one. To me, probably I would have bought. I can go straight in on this one at £60 bid. At £60, oh, we've got £75, £80 bid now. Go £5, £80 internet, go £5 and in. And we're all finished at £80, rooms out, internet's out then. All done and finished and selling at £80. Well done. <laughs> well done. Christine is back on form. Now for Colson's last lot. The old Imari pattern vase. Profit, do we think? This is the one. It's very wrong if it doesn't make more than 20 pounds. This is an antique classic. This is your little safety net. Nice. This could be your little pot of gold. You watch and learn. £80 start, me. £80, surely. What? Go on. £80, well count down, but £80. Go on. £60. Oh. £60 bid on the internet at 60. <laughs> at 60 bid, it's a good Cheers, thing. Cheers, Mum. 60 bid, 60 bid, 60 bid, 60. Try five now, it's, 60 it's, bid, It's beautiful. Five. No, it is. 60 bid, surely five. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bid whoa. bid that. at just £60. Well done. It's a popular result. I'm so pleased with that. Well done. Well, 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 only had one bid on it as well. Only I know. One bid. Finally, the auctioneer's favourite, that Roman vase Christine spotted. I think it's a very unique piece. I think a million. I was so happy a million pounds. If only. Could you imagine? <laughs> 80 pounds down, it's, it's asking for a bid. 80 pounds, five. This is going to go big. 85. 90. 90 pounds. This is going big, this. In the room first, 100, 110, 120. Going 30. massive. I'll take the phone first. Who's on the phone? Who is Maybe on the phone? 160. <gasps> 170. Internet's in at 170. 180 now on the phone. No, sir. 180 back in. 190. 200. <laughs> 200 pounds in the room. 210. 220. 220 back in. Oh. 220 pounds. Last chance, internet, you're flashing quickly. Gentleman's bid at 220, are you sure? All finished then. Selling to the room at 220. <laughs> very well done. Oh, I love to have seen it. That is very well that done. Was. Also, a sporting response from Colson. What a way to end it, eh? I think we might have won. I'm not really Shut. sure. I think you might. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go and tot up what we made. I'll go and tot up what we've lost. Yeah. Yes, I don't think there's any question about who the victor is today. Colson, after auction costs, made a bit of a loss, ending up with £357.78. While Christine, also after costs, made over a hundred pounds profit. So she wins with five hundred and twelve pounds and eighty p. And that profit goes to children in need. <laughs> oh, what a day, ah! Huh? Great day for you two. Yeah. Great day for you. I'm very happy. Yeah. Very happy. How I've do you really feel? Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Obviously, really happy that we made some good profit. We had oh, yeah. fun, didn't we? Which we is did. That, we enjoyed ourselves. That's, that's, that's the most the important thing. bit, is having fun. <laughs> you were so confident, though, what happened? I just had a certain style of things that I liked, and clearly other people don't like them, I guess. And you had a vase that was 2,000 years old, and it sold like hotcakes. Like Eccles cakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I have learned to make on this trip. But you had loads of fun. <laughs> had loads of fun. I've loved it. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much oh, for your advice you. as well. Thank you it's for helping me out, Hetty. Very, time. very thank much appreciate it. Oh, have fun on your ride home then. Yeah. We will. Last bit of MGB time. It's a good job I'm good at driving, isn't it? Well, I'm letting you today. Bye. 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 <laughs> I think we've done really well. We've seen a lot of the north of England. We have. We've seen a lot of antiques, and now we've learnt what sells at auction and what doesn't. What's your Yorkshire accent again? It's been great, Cop. I've really enjoyed myself. Job well done.